hope you're having a great day today. It is Wednesday for you. I hope that your day is going well. My day is going wonderfully this morning. Got off. It's a little bit chilly. The sun is out. Birds are singing. 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 They're singing. I went for a walk and I'm like, oh, it's freezing. It's below 50 degrees today. So <laughs> thankful for my little sweatshirt hoodie that I got yesterday at Walmart. <laughs> so I'm very thankful for that to be a little bit warm today. But for today's video, I got to do a lot of putting away of groceries. So we did all of that shopping, all of that groceries. I'm still amazed at how much stuff I got for the price I got. I'm like, wow, that makes me excited. Like when I used to go discount store shopping, which we had all the time in North Carolina, I'm like, it was great to go because you got to get so much stuff for so cheap. But I'm like, after shopping yesterday, I'm like, wow, I got so much stuff for like cheap, I feel like in my work. So I'm like, that's a good thing. So I'm like, it's good. You can do it either way. If you got discount stores, if you don't, you can still, you know, eat inexpensively, you know, within reason for things, even in today's time. So I am going to be focusing today. I'm putting all of it away. That's my goal today. I've got a lot of veg uh, not vegetables. Yes, I do have vegetables, but I have a lot of meat to prep as well. So we've got to focus on getting that stuff, like a lot of stuff. I've made my list for all that chicken. I want to prepare it, get it all ready. I'm not going to make all my stuff today, but I will make meals today that we can eat. But um, just prepping the meat, getting it ready for the next stage, whatever I decide to turn it into. So it's going to be a great day today. Are you ready for a good day? I am ready for a great day. The sun is out, even though it's freezing. I'm like, okay, it'll make the day go by even better. So let's just start with the day. I got an earbud in. I'm listening to some good worship music and just keep moving. All right, let's go. I'm going to start right over here. This cupboard right here, a little messy. <laughs> it's our cranberry nut cupboard. Now I put these over here. I need to put these in my snack cupboard. There's not that much in here. We just have a little bit in here. So I'll probably focus on eating it up. So this is more of my, I need to see cupboard. It's got our spices in it. It's got our extra stuff in it. And you know, put our peanut butter in here. And so I keep a lot of my um, extra bottles of spice, cornmeal and that kind of stuff up on top. And our, um, this right here, baking, and what is this called? This is called Cocoa powder, baking, that's not baking, baking cocoa, and then all the pastas are gonna go on the bottom. So I'm gonna go get my little step stool so I can reach up here and then kind of straighten it a little bit. Good to straighten, it doesn't have to be perfect, but if I, I do do containers of stuff, just so bugs don't get into it, because that, I lived in North Carolina, and there was a lot of pantry moss and everything, and I think Florida is worse, they said. I don't really, I don't really notice bugs inside here. We did when we first moved in, you know, bugs were in, whatever. <laughs> They, it's like, I feel like it's just like they wanted to see like, what is these people gonna do? But I haven't really seen a ton in the house. We went through a little phase of ants, but that's like tiny ones. It wasn't really a big deal. And that was in the 120 degree summer. So for the most part, everything is pretty much closed. I don't mind keeping original packaging. If it's pretty close, you know what I mean? Like this is a box, but it's sealed inside. Like certain pastas, I don't like keeping because you can get inside pasta box and we have in the mountains had stuff go in there so those I like to put in containers do I recommend doing it all Pinterest worthy if you want go ahead if it makes you feel better great you do have to no you definitely don't have to it's just whatever works for you and then I know like I got a couple I got these little glass containers and I did buy these I was gonna originally line them up above my stove but I didn't but I do like having these smaller ones to grab versus the big giant ones that way I keep the bigger giant ones up on top and then just fill these ones. In my old house, I had a pantry closet and I had it all on one wall, just different access than here. So does it make it terrible? No, it works great. I like having it in here and I can just kind of see, oh, I gotta fill it up and then grab it from on the top. So it works good. So let me go to my stool and we'll go up here and clean that up. I'm getting my Valentine's sprinkles out because these were from my good viewer on here. She bought me a ton of sprinkles. She said, like your mom used to send you. So we have a ton of sprinkles. We're gonna be making some Valentine's stuff. So I'm gonna get that out and put that in. I saved one of my containers like this to store them in. Look how cute those are. Those are so cute. Look at all those in there. So fun. Okay, I'm gonna put these up because I'll need these. I usually get the bigger containers, but I do have a lot of small ones that I use like a little bit of. So I need to take note of like for my taco seasoning, if I use a lot of paprika, I just need to get the big one. It definitely probably be a lot cheaper. So instead of getting the smaller one, so note for myself to take note of that later on. I'm 
Look what I found, cream of tartar in the back. I thought I had some just in the very back, so that's okay. We've got two now. I'll put that down here probably so I see it. I need to just be more aware of the spices I'm using and so now that I like making our own taco seasoning definitely be you know take notice of which ones do I need for big ones instead of having all those tiny ones because it will benefit to have a bigger thing so that's good this is good right here the only thing I'm gonna take out of here is um, chocolate chips and put those in the pantry over here and then I have this I think I bought these for coating chicken a long time ago well tonight I'm gonna do a sheep pan dinner with chicken so this will be good we'll do some um, I mean, I forgot this was in here, and I have these little nuts. I think we got a charcuterie board with these on here. These are just sitting there, so I need to take those out as well. So this is good enough. It's good enough. It's not. And people look at me like it's not organized, but it is for me. I see it. Yes, I'll do more. Um, the spices will get better as I um, see what we use more of, that kind of thing, because I'm just, it's just kind of where we're at in life and what we're having. So this is good for now. And then down here, we just store our pasta. So don't put the food in front of it. All of our pastas are down here. So back when I had the discount store shopping, I would never know what I could get. Like, well, and mind you, I went to Walmart and got stuff too, but like I might, I would always get like really strange pasta, like good stuff, but like different ones that I wouldn't like normally get at a regular store. And so I had a lot of different containers, different things, but now I'm learning, okay, this is about the only kinds we can get here. So this is what you can have. So pretty much use the same containers versus like switching them around all the time. So I felt like I did that a lot in the mountains. So our pastas that we have, I have a small shell one. I have a corkscrew one. Um, is that like, and then I've got one for orzo pasta. I have a huge thing of orzo. I have a whole bag back here of orzo. We got that discount store to last forever. And then this spaghetti macaroni that I found at the discount store. It's like tiny. It's literally like box macaroni and cheese noodles. Genius. Would you find them anywhere else? Probably. I could probably go to all like a grocery store like a Publix or you know a smaller store and find things. I think Greg was telling me, somebody at work was telling about Winn-Dixie and they said that's a pretty good store too. So maybe one day we'll have to go to Winn-Dixie and see because you never know the fun things they might have. So this is good for and then we keep elbow pasta and that's in the bottom. I get a big container of that and noodles <laughs> curly noodles that's the other one i'm trying to think what else do we have curly noodles and spaghetti so i just is keep them in containers why do you keep them in containers because of bugs does it look pinterest worthy no but i keep them in there because of the fact for the bug thing i don't like that in the food so i just haven't done that before don't want to relive that so let's just put these and fill them up These containers work really good. I don't know, I'm trying to think of how big these are. These are, um, I haven't, I'm pretty sure I have a link to my Amazon store. These have been nice. They have been used like crazy. Some plastic containers are used and you're definitely like, okay, they're definitely worn. This fits three boxes of pasta. So I've learned that. So if you wanna fill it up all the way to the top and make it look good, three boxes. Then when you go to make it, I always kind of divide it in three in my head. So I go, okay, that's one box. This is two boxes. That way you're not, you know, making, making too much, which does happen. And I didn't realize I have a chicken down here. So this is, it's a good thing though. I'm just gonna have my spaghetti in here and there are egg noodles in that one. And then we will be, good. this is, you want yourself one of these too. A box cutter, that's probably one of my favorite things that I just bought because it makes um, cutting boxes open so much easier. So our spaghetti, oh, that's gonna be too many. So you wanna be able to fit all that, I won't even be able to fit all that in that box. 
the box is not too big. I do have two boxes. We had one for linguine, but I probably will not get linguine anymore. I don't even know if Walmart sells fettuccine, do they? They probably do, don't they? It's like, we don't have Alfredo that much to um, have it, and so um, we would just use a different noodle for it. So I guess I won't, I was gonna just put the pasta on top here. Rice, I gotta go, I gotta go get my rice, because I know I have rice now. I was like, I gotta get rice, yes, I have to get back home to rice. These ones hold three bags as well. Um, just a different size. Isn't that funny? These are, these are the same, aren't they? They would be about the same. They must be the same as the square ones because they do fit that way. So I keep elbow in here and these. And I keep my dried beans in here. I keep them forever. I make refried beans with them. We have lentils and we have black beans. This we've had for a long time. I think I filled them up before we moved here. And it's good. So I'm just going to go like this and put our spaghetti right here. I'll go get rice sticking in there. I've got three of these on stack. I usually have a lot of mac and cheese over here, but I've opted not to um, stack up anymore. That's okay, we can make some from scratch. But I get all the um, cheese sauces for Jensen, which is, works out really good. So I have um, like Alfredo right here, which is really good. I just, oh, these are actually, oh, this is pasta. so this is pasta. This would be the pasta. We don't really like the pasta, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna put this in the Alfredo one because we don't like the gluten-free pasta. It's just not um, something we eat. So I will put this in here, and then I know that this would be Alfredo sauce for him. So this one, and then this is zesty cheddar salad, probably spicy. And then in here, what I'll do is open it up and take out the cheese packet, and then maybe the mac the, I usually put the small pasta in my container here. So this stuff I got at the discount store was $2.50. I think Walmart, it's $6 for this. So I probably will do another... Discount store haul, we'll go to that same little small one we went to. I know there's a bigger one I want to go to, but I just haven't made it all the way over there yet. So that's it. That's it for this cupboard. So I'm feeling like, okay, we got some good stuff here. Let me go get my big giant bag of rice. So for my rice here, I don't, I used to have those big containers for our flour and I just replaced them with smaller ones. So this is works good just to grab it out, but I have a huge 20 pound bag of rice that'll probably take a little while. So I have this one. This was an extra. I bought like flour and sugar containers and it was two in a pack. So um, let's see. I don't know if I need that big one or if I have, um, I have another one of these small ones. We'll see what that fits better in. Let me pour this in. So that works out really good. 25 pounds goes in here and here. So now I know um, just to get that same size um, rice to put in those two things. So this cupboard is done. Actually not done. I put my emergency ramen in here. <laughs> the emergency probably shouldn't go in the regular cupboard, but they haven't been like, I don't know, we had it filled for a while and we didn't really eat it. So until I said, okay, yeah, we can have ramen tonight. So I will put this in here as well. This cupboard's gonna be hard for you to go to because it's kind of like next to the refrigerator and I've got my stove here. So this just keeps all of our um, flowers and sugars. I'm not gonna fill that up right now. I think, up a, I think on top I put the M&Ms to hide them because I feel like this is gonna be a free-for-all for the kids. Just saying, I think I can probably actually put on my, let me go get my um, baking stuff. I realized I had a um, vinegar open over there and one over here open. So these were bought at the same time. So I don't mind pouring them into each other. I'm like, how did I do that? But I think there's only going to be a tiny little bit extra. So they all fit. Nope. Okay. So maybe I'll be put my vinegar up here. Probably the back. Oops. 
So I've got big flour and sugar as well, but those are like 25 pounds, so I'll probably just leave those in the hallway closet, um, and I'll see those. That way I can go, okay, that's something I can do. This is a lot of oil, so we're gonna make some, some frying this month. So I'm gonna put this in here. And then when I open my flowers and stuff, I will be putting them on this shelf right here. I kept my, I usually always keep my peanut butter and syrup in the refrigerator. Have for years, and the reason why is because when we were first married, we lived in the city. Young bride, not knowing what you're doing. There's no internet. It's not like you looked at things online all the time. I remember opening up and pouring out syrup onto my kids' food, and what was in there? Black ants. I was like, oh my goodness. And it was closed, mind you. Obviously, it probably was not closed enough. Yeah, very gross. <laughs> so after that, I like I put everything in the refrigerator. I'm like, that is just gross. But just make sure the top is closed. You'll be good to go. And then the rest of these cupboards are more. The good thing is I'm learning like. I was gonna have Greg build a huge pantry over there, but I'm like, how much space over there do I really actually need? So I'm glad we didn't jump in and do all that in the beginning because I would have had to make something and only months later to go, oh, that's not what I wanted. So I'm gonna be learning, learning what I need. This is basically our baking stuff. I'm gonna stick in here, like things I'd use for like the chocolate chips and these caramel bits and mini marshmallows. The only flaws, this does not fit in the bottom shelf. So I guess this goes up here too. I guess that's how that's gonna go. So I'll be deciding how I'm gonna do these shelves over here. All I have is Rice Krispies for Rice Krispie treats in here. So I'm gonna kinda of see how I utilize my cupboards because again, we're learning and it's gonna be a whole different way of making food. All those good things. And then over here, I just put our bread under here for now. This, I only keep our bread here. I was gonna get the bread box, but I only put it when we have my friends, fresh bread because, and that's only gonna be when I first go shopping because what I do is I take my bread and as soon as it's past the date or close to the date, I stick them in the refrigerator. Like this is gonna be February 7th. So this will be like two weeks I keep this little bread. If it lasts that long, I'm sure it'll go before then. But then I'll be sticking it in the freezer because, um, and then I'll pull it out. If you leave it on the counter, it's gonna go bad really quick, but if you put it in the refrigerator, it'll last. So that's what we do with our bread. So I was gonna do like a whole like bread thing and I realized, you know, that's not gonna actually work for me. So this is gonna stick my coffee here and then our tomatoes, let me put those over there. So this setup is working really good. So this setup is working good for us. I do like this here. It's a little bit like if you have to go over there, a little bit in the way, but it's nice having the toaster here, carrying in this. Does it look Pinterest worthy? No, but do most people ever show their whole house? No, except me. <laughs> so I'm okay. I'm okay to show like a real lived in house and how it looks. It doesn't have to be perfect like your home. You can make it look however you want. Like it doesn't have to be perfect according to whatever trends there are, whatever things are. It's like make it functional. Like I'm gonna have bread sticking out there, but it's gonna be for like a week and then that's it. And then the bread's gonna go in the refrigerator. So do what you can do. That's the beautiful thing of home. So I'm gonna show that this, this doesn't show away because why? Oh, because we put this big one in there. It's okay, but it's nice having that big bowl down there. So now I'm gonna open my blinds back up because the sun, the sun was coming in, and then I think I can move over there. Since we're not just putting away groceries, we're also cleaning and picking things up. So I'm going to pick up my countertop here, wipe everything down, and I've got my forks and spoons I bought from Sam's yesterday. I'm going to put those in the dishwasher because I don't think the dishwasher has ran yet. So I think I can put the rest of the dishes in here, fill it up, wipe everything down, and the kitchen will be cleaned. Okay, I'm laughing because this plant right here was supposed to be pretty much self-sufficient. Now, I have been watering real light like once a week. Look at like this is dead on here. It's looking very dead. I just went to touch this and this like broke off. Is this just the dead part here? What am I, I didn't even do anything to it. That's the beauty. Like look at that, just totally just rock, ripped right off. These just took right off. Okay, so are these just, those just are not strong. And then this is really hanging over. Oh my gosh, I just, oh, okay. So obviously it's not in there very good. So look at how that's just hanging. That's literally hanging. Okay, so let's redo these. Sarah, where are you? And anybody else that knows these as well? So let me, um, oh my goodness, that's so bad. These literally are just falling off. Okay, let me like dig a little hole here and stick this in. See if it would regrow. Oh my goodness. I think that's what happened with my mom's and I just would give up and just throw it away. But I guess if I just push it back in, right? I thought, maybe I need a bigger pot. Probably not, right? I do have a bigger pot outside. 
Would that help if I put it in with some new soil and maybe push it in? This little thing right here is just not doing it. Yeah, I'm trying. These I assume don't. If you push them down, right? Push the dirt around so it can grow. Like Jaden has done, um, she has some, um, that's just like not good. She has, what does she have? She has those little, um, what are these things called? The fake, the succulents. She is like literally broken off and she's like made her own little collection of um, those. And I think that's awesome. So I need them more. All right, let's do, I'm not soaking. I did soak just to like let it get, but it was very dry looking. It's not like it's dripping out the bottom. That's water from the side. Okay. <laughs> let me know. Maybe I'll do that beforehand. Should I put that and then see how the edges are getting like brown? Is that normal? Can you see that? Help me. Help me, my green thumb people. I'm not, this is not my gifting. I'm not very good at it. And I'm, I can acknowledge that in my life, but I don't feel like I had to do anything to it. It just didn't do good. So maybe I need to um, take it. I have like a bigger pot, more like this size, a little bit bigger than this. And I have soil. I actually left a whole bag of soil. So should I put that in there, put this in there and bring it inside? Okay, we'll do our best so I can do. I'm just gonna laugh about that. It works. Let me, I'm gonna wash these. I'm gonna put them in my dishwasher. I think the dishwasher, yes, let's load the dishwasher. Okay, now I'm over here. It's amazing how long it takes you to put groceries away, especially when you're doing, oh, camera's rolling. Especially when you're doing a once a month stock of everything. I'm like, my goodness, this could take me all morning, which is crazy. Think of the, the amount of time we spend on food, like planning, driving to the store, shopping, loading your car, driving back home, carrying it inside. If you do vlogging, you do a YouTube, you do a video of it, and then putting it all away. And then taking it out and preparing it, or thinking about making sure you know what you want to do, preparing the food, making the food, cleaning up the food. There's like a whole process of how much time is spent in food. So, so now this cover right here holds all of our canned goods. Now we do have, oh, hold on. Ugh. I've got stuff all up. I want to see what the floor looks like. This is what it looks like. This is how everything is lined up in front of the bathroom and lined up over here. <laughs> So I have this cupboard right here. This is what we use for our canned stuff. I'm debating, do I switch it out and use the one down there and have a big old pantry? I don't know. I and mean, that's why um, when we, you know, we moved in here, we didn't know what we we're gonna do. Now that we're in here, I'm like having the wheels turn of different things that I want to do. So I'm gonna see how many cans fit in here. I think I can fit all these cans in. I'm pretty sure I can. And see if I can just leave this as the can cupboard and the big stuff on the bottom cupboard. I think that might work that way. And then, um, the one in the hallway down there, we mostly keep like snacks in there. There's like chips in there. There's crackers in there. There's fruit snacks. There's extra popcorn seeds. And then it holds like the vacuum, the popcorn maker. I put the slushy machine in. It holds my crock pots. And so I'm just, I'm debating like what to do. I feel like that can just be a storage closet. What I really would like to do is put more snacks on the, right here. Don't mind the cupboard open. I got plastic up. Like use this as a snack bar and cereal bar through here. So what I'm going to do, I bought a small microwave because um, I didn't want a humongous thing taking up space, but I would really like to get right here a rack. Like a, I'm thinking like a baker's rack right here. Because the only thing right here is the vacuum. The vacuum can be moved somewhere else. It doesn't have to sit right here. Put a baker's rack here. Put the microwave on it. Get a bigger microwave that, you know, that was just the cheap one that we got right away just because we needed a microwave. There was not one here. Get a bigger one to sit on it. And then like my, in my air fryer, I don't have my air fryer out. It usually, we had it over there, but it just takes up the entire counter by the time you put the microwave on there. So I'd like to be able to put the microwave here with the air fryer and have that on a stand right here. So it's right here. Maybe put my hair popcorn, little things on shelves, and that right there. And then this frees up this whole counter. I would really like to use this counter for things like 
snacks, like snack containers. Maybe put it out. I'm going to see. I'm just kind of thinking how everything's going to go. I kind of like it that way. My little rack that I move around, you know, the um, baking rack. I love it as a baking rack, but it's getting filled with stuff now. <laughs> and I'm like, okay, so I have that little container, but now I have different measuring cups for Maddie. And I have the spatulas. And I'm like, hmm. So I have like the shelves on the bottom hold. Um, what do we have in there? We have like our cake platters and that. So I really like something where I can put the cake platter somewhere else and be able just to use that rack for baking stuff. And I don't know, the drawers have towels in them. I like to have them in there because I don't have any other space to stick my towels and wash cloths. So that, that is my like, what can I do to make that better? Like I have, we have a lot of towels, we have a lot of wash cloths. Where can I put those so it's a better spot? Should I get like a basket? I mean, you want to have them available obviously, but I don't have any more drawer space. Like my drawer space, I have one small drawer that I could change over, but the rest of them are all pretty functional. So it's like, where do you put the towels at? That's where I'm at of like, hmm, and I like them in the kitchen because obviously you get them out easier or do you put them somewhere else and then just walk and go get them? I don't know. I'm debating what to do because I would really like to take, sorry, we're thinking today. Is that okay? I might need to chit right? Like this is great. Like some people don't like this little thing. I like this because it holds all my baking stuff for most, for the most part. I like that all the little tools are on it. You know what would be great though is be able to use the drawers for the tools, but I have my washcloths and towels in here because I don't have any other place for them. So the only other thing I was thinking I could do was get some kind of basket on the refrigerator maybe and put them in there. I just don't know. There's just no other space in the kitchen that I can think of. You know what I mean? Like, like there's a bottom cupboard that I put like my bread machine in. So maybe like, like that's an option. Okay, so in here, this has just my bread machine in it. And then like there's a shelf there. So bread machine doesn't have to go here. Should I get some kind of shelf thing in here? I'm sure somebody's got ideas. Give me some ideas. It's not a huge cupboard, so I could put, I mean, this can go somewhere else. That can go in the hallway, down the hallway with the crock pots and stuff. I just put it in here because I use it. So it's kind of small. So what could you put? There's a lot of space in the back too. So do you put like another shelf in here? Yes, Greg can build something, but let's, let's stay out of like Greg can build something because Greg's really busy. What can Amy buy that she can put in here? Like maybe a couple baskets in there? I don't know. Maybe that's what I'll do. And then I can put my towels and stuff in here. This can go in the hallway in the very back. And then that rack. And then this can turn more into a baking cart. So what I would do is all these little tools we have, I can put in the drawers. I can put my mixer. My mixer had to move. I had it up here in a drawer. And then the cake platter, I'd like to put on that little rack over there that I'm going to put in my grave. And then I can put my metal bowls over here. And then this can be... It'd be awesome if you put your mixer on it. You can put the mixer on top if you really wanted to, but then it's got to sit out. I probably won't have my mixer set up because it's red. Maybe if it dies one day, I'll get a turquoise one to match the kitchen. But that would work for this. That's an idea. So what kind of containers? Let me know. You guys are awesome with ideas. I love ideas. And I like being in here to be able to go, this work, this doesn't, because I like this. And people say, oh, it's kind of small. Get rid of it. But I like it. I like the ease of it. I like having this everything in one area. So let me know. Okay, let's go back to the cans. Can cupboard, I'm gonna do as much as I can because I gotta get the kids moving in a little bit here because they gotta start their school and all that stuff. So let me get as much as I can get done. So in my pantry here, I try to keep, I'm trying. I mean, it's never gonna be perfect. You're always gonna have more of something, less of others. Um, I'm trying to keep just a whole shelf for beans. <laughs> so we'll see if I can get all of these beans lined up. Um, you can move your other old ones to the front. If you don't, that's okay. Beans stay in cans for years. It'll be okay if you don't. Okay, it's pretty great. So a, a box of the cans fits in a whole row. I didn't know that, two, four, six, eight, I was thinking 10. It does go over a little bit. So this is good. I still have space here in the middle. I didn't get a lot of kidney and a lot of black because I feel like we don't use those as much in Pinto, the same thing. I could stack completely so it's looking satisfying, but this is what I bought just to have extra and that will be plenty extra. And then, oh, there's another chickpea. And another one up here. So this works and up here I keep all my tomato products and based on whatever we have there's some dressing so I'll probably move those out so we can have room for all the tomato stuff. Okay. 
Okay, so then this shelf, I just have all of our, our tomato-based stuff here. So our diced tomatoes, um, I have a little bit extra there. Would I get another row? Probably, because I'll probably end up using a lot. We're gonna be doing our own salsa. There's salsa over here still, but I would like to make our own. If it's good, keep it that way. And then I still have tomato paste because I bought the wrong stuff. <laughs> and tomato sauce, I got one extra. I don't know why that didn't fit. Our Alfredo, does it bother anybody else that's not turned? When every time I put a can on, they're all backwards. <laughs> and then our um, curries over here, I have like some taco sauce, just random stuff I got at the discount store. So then I'm gonna go down here. This is gonna be like our veggie shelf on the bottom veggie and maybe a little bit of fruit. Oh, how the day can get away with you. It is now way in the afternoon. <laughs> so I stopped this morning because it was time to our school. I've been trying to keep that um, time frame of no matter what, stop at this time. Hello, Maxine, just coming to see your mommy. Hello, she's like, I'm just coming to see you. We got the door, it was freezing in here so real fast. Anyways, keep the time frame. That's what I'm trying to do is keep the time frame so that I still do school at a certain time, this kind of thing. Today we watch a video, we watch Hidden Silence. It has the girl, um, I can't think of her name is right now, but she's the one that does Christy from Cutter Gap. Remember that movie um, a long time ago? I can't think of what her name is right now. And then Marion Cunningham from Happy Days, she was on there. So it was a good, it was a good movie about um, the Holocaust. And so we watched that. Got our school stuff done. And Greg just came home and brought Brooklyn. They're like, it's so warm. We're going to go swimming. I'm like, what? I'm like, it's for, it's so cold in here. I literally, we were sitting on the couch. I got my little, I'm going to call it my squirrel robe. <laughs> I got my squirrel robe because it was so cold. But it's when you're inside and it's like, you know, it just gets chilly. It just feels chilled. So anyways, I'm back to here. I got to get this done because I'm like, I have a whole lot of meat I have to put away. So I'm going to try to focus here on getting this organized in the bottom and then uh, I can be done. So that shelf felt a little bit different because normally we'd have our small jar of pickles. So I think, and then these are bigger, these are smaller. The shelf, it's the the peas. Uh, you can do one more row of these, but you can't do one of the peas. So I don't know if the wood is cut, not perfectly straight or what. So now I got to do something with these because they're random. A little bit of fruit, probably move them up there. So doing good. Let's move up. So these ones, like pears, crushed pineapple, and maraschino cherries. I'm going to put those over in my baking cover because they don't really have a purpose over here. Over there, I'll see them. Remember, put them in a recipe. Okay, I was going to bring it up there where I fill it in, but it's <laughs> there's a lot of stuff. I had to put it all up there. I'm going to stand up and organize it and see what I can do. Okay, did this is what I ended up with in here. So I've got veggies down here. This is going to be all my aprons I had hanging back up. So this will be good for at least to see the beans. There you go, all the beans. It's okay. I had another one of these hooks on this side and it broke off it will not stick so i kind of gave up on it just left it on this side that's okay i don't mind moving over all the tomatoey pasta kind of dishes and a little bit of the taco stuff right there and then the jalapenos and green chilies right there up here i wanted to be able to see it because obviously this is the angle i'm looking at it so i didn't want to put so much up there so i left the side for peanut butter and jelly i've got our asian stuff everything's backwards that does that drive me crazy sorry sesame oil <laughs> I turned it, I didn't turn it. Sesame oil, and then behind it is soy sauce. I can at least see that, because I have a lot of soy sauce. The sweet chili sauce, this is just a few things of coconut cream and green curry. All this is chicken. The ranch, because that's always hard to find that, so that's good. And I have steak sauce. This is gonna be our Chick-fil-A sauce when I moved in here. They didn't have the Walmart version of Chick-fil-A sauce. They just had real Chick-fil-A sauce. So I bought a couple, because we were eating a lot of easy meals. Well, we haven't been doing that, so the Chick-fil-A sauce is still there. I know, shocker. So then behind it, I have a couple dressings, Thousand Islands and Italian. We haven't even touched it, so I'll have to do something with it. And then there's, I can see in the very back is chocolate syrup. Then the very top, I didn't want to put anything up there because it requires a stool. That stuff is not something we're going to use all the time. Obviously, mustard's gone. We're going to get mustard. Same thing with ketchup, barbecue sauce. This is going to be reserved for Miracle Whip because I have four jars coming from Sam's Club and then I put the applesauce over there. So this one I can at least see. So when I go, oh, that space right there is empty. That means I need barbecue sauce. That'll help out a little bit. I'd like to get to the point of like having like a place for everything. Once I get into like knowing what I'm going to cook here and how we're going to eat, it'll be nice to be able to go, Oh, this is a tomato sauce jar right here, row right here. This is the tomatoes right here. This is the Alfredo right here. But I have to get to that point yet. I'm not sure if I'm there yet. So this is good. And then the bottom, 
has all Maxine's treats and dog food. Miss Barbara, she's got too many. <laughs> so all her treats, she's got so many. The two hot cocos we kind of ate a lot. Don't, then there's more. Ranch that'll get opened in individual containers. I have one thing in cranberry juice. And then we still have popsicles from last summer. I have a bunch in the freezer for when they were eating like crazy and then they stopped. So we'll have a lot of popsicles for this next coming year. So I'm feeling really good about this pantry. Okay, so let me come in here. Now this is definitely not... You good? Okay, so this area right now is just like storage of everything. So... I'm not sure how that's gonna look. I don't even know yet. I'm like, this obviously is not good. We're gonna build stuff in here. I just don't know what I wanna have in here just yet. So for food, like crackers and the chips right there, that's about it and like the popcorn stuff. So can that go somewhere else? Oh, I'm sure it can. I don't know. I'm not sure yet what I'm gonna do. Maybe this will be like just a big shelf pantry and then we'll put like things like crackers and chips because the snacks I would like to leave out here. I would eventually like, I'd like that to go on the microwave cart and I'd like to be able to have their snacks out, but will we even have a ton of snacks? I don't know. That's how it's gonna go like this. Nobody even likes this. We'll always have a cereal, maybe some microwave popcorn and cranberry nuts, but like we won't be having a ton of little things like pretzels and stuff. So I'm not really sure yet how this is gonna go, but for now I'm gonna set this out. It's okay, it's out of sight, out of mind. And one thing we can do is sometimes in some of these cupboards is big stuff like um, big pots. A lot of my paper stuff. I could put chips and stuff in here and move that when we have the shelves in here as the extra thing. So I don't know. We'll just have to see how it goes. Okay, I'm going to come in here and put these in here. This cupboard is gonna be a little bit of, a bunch of stuff shoved in there, but um, the kids just came in there in the pool, the girls are out there, so I said, come get some sunscreen. So they, um, this is good. The little shampoo for, um, I like in the boys' bathroom, you know, soak it slippery. I'd rather have it in the pump. So what I'll do is when their pump is gone, we'll pour that in there and have it that way. This is good. This stuff is not bleach at all. It's more like a cleaner with um, maybe a hint of it, but it doesn't really bleach. So I got, I went to the Publix and all I had was this. I'm like, I don't even know if this will work like it. We'll hope for it. But I wanted something for upstairs in the girls' bathroom. Leave it there. One of them down here. So when it does get moldy, we just spray it and it gets clean. So we'll use it up. Don't worry. Nothing going to waste. It was only a dollar. And then um, it's good. So this is done in here. Let's go back to the kitchen. So I'm in here. I'm like, what else do I have? I have flour and sugar. I'm just going to take that and put that in the hallway closet. Okay, something I might do is, I did, wasn't sure what I was gonna do if I had, I wasn't planning on getting big 25 pound bags of flour and sugar. I was just gonna do smaller, but it's around this whole new thing of eating, cooking from scratch. I'm thinking, I'm gonna, I save these, thank goodness. So I have these out in the garage. So I'm gonna keep uh, two of these, one for flour and one for sugar, cause that's what I can get in big bulk. Then in that closet, in the pantry on the floor, when I fill up my smaller container, I can pour the rest in here. And I think, I don't think it'll fit 25 pound bag or 10, I think it's 10 pound of flour. Yeah, but it'll fit a lot in here. So I'm going to save this as well and put my wood shake. Um, these are for the smoker. I have to smoke stuff tomorrow because I didn't get to do that today. I'll just take it outside and set it outside. I was like debating, like, do I put on the sleeves? Like it's fit. The girls are literally out there in the sunshine. <laughs> in their bathing suits and I'm like, hmm, I'm debating what it feels like, but it'll, I shut the door. I'm like, I'll keep it cooler in here, I said, and then I'll, uh, I'll just pull my hair back and I've got a lot of meal prep to do first. Right here, coffee though first. This is pumpkin spice. These are ones that I froze. Yes, you can freeze these and yes, they last very a long time. These, we got the discount store. It is well past their prime and I'll gladly share November 25th. 2023, completely fine. They put enough processed stuff in here that it doesn't go bad. I know, haters, that's okay. It's still good, it's still fine. So this was in the freezer. Eat it up, I usually drink it up within three days. So I'm gonna grab one of these and then I'm gonna start on all of my meat. I have chicken drumsticks, chicken. I gotta like do a whole bunch of stuff with it. So I'm gonna get all my stuff out and then we'll just start working. Let's start right away. I've got chicken drumsticks here. I'm gonna divide these up. I'm trying to be how many in a package. Let me see how many is in here. Let's cut that open and see. We have got two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, thirteen. So I have to decide how many would get eaten at a meal because it's not everybody. It's just the boys, Greg, um, Jensen, and Steven. So I'm thinking three, 
four, five. I think that's a good fair number. Okay, so I'm gonna put these in bags and just freeze them. If I was gonna use this up in the next few days, then I would leave some out, but since I'm not, they will just go in the freezer. So this is good. This was $4 for these, super cheap. Let's make some bags. So I have four packages of chicken. That's a lot of chicken. Like that, that's, now I'm gonna be serving that. We're gonna be, what we're gonna be doing is frying chicken. So I have this with some chicken um, strips for the girls and I that like it. And so I was thinking tonight I'm gonna make this. I was gonna do, I saw a sheet pan dinner. I have potatoes left over from the weekend and um, I was thinking about, it. I'm like, hmm, I could do like a sheet pan dinner with chicken and potatoes cut up and some green beans. I think it was for creamy garlic chicken. But I'm like, let me get creative here. And so then I saw this, so I'm like, why don't I call my chicken in this? So why don't I just do chicken drumsticks along with a few pieces of chicken, this, and then we'll do the potatoes and we'll get them with good spices and all the delicious stuff and green beans and we'll put it in the oven. That'll be a sheet pan here. So that is where this extra bag is gonna go. So I'm gonna put this inside here. The other ones are gonna go in the garage in the freezer. Let's keep rolling. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do, because my chicken is gonna be some prepping, I'm gonna do my hamburger. The only problem, I don't have a problem yet, I have a lot, is when I looked at my bags, I was like, oh, I have a ton of bags. In reality, it does look like a ton, but it's not by time I'm gonna be putting all this stuff away. My hamburger, I put in quart bags. And so I'm like, oh, I only have a little bit of that, but that's okay, I can put them in the bigger bags. The beautiful thing is I have Sam's Club Plus Preferred Membership. So like if I forget something, I can just order it. Like, you know what I forgot? Tin foil. I have a small that like thing of it, but I was gonna just get another small one and then I was like, you know what? Let me just get a big giant roll like I used to have. I wasn't gonna do that anymore, but I'm like, it's pointless. It's like literally six bucks for a small one. I think it was 18 for the humongous one that I'll have forever. I'll have FedEx guy. <laughs> FedEx guy dropping stuff off. So I was, anyways, what was I talking about? The big giant thing of foil and I'm just gonna keep it back there. It's gonna work. And so if I do run out of bags, I can just order. I would just get it at Walmart, it's cheaper, but I can order freezer bags right from Sam's Club and they will deliver to your house and it doesn't cost me anymore. So I'm okay with that if I have to, whatever works. So now I'm gonna take my hamburger here. I don't think I need to make it into anything. Let me look. Basically I'm gonna divide it up into bags. I'll do some smaller ones, a little bit bigger ones so I can do burgers. It's easy, squish it out, squish it out, it works. Okay, what are some tips for your hamburger? So when you go, it's a 10 pound loaf, big giant 10 pound thing. So when you look at it, go, okay, five pounds is about right there. That'd be about halfway. Half of that is two and a half pounds. So if you wanna break it up into three, which I do is like one and a half pounds for each bag. One and a half pounds will kind of fit in here. So when you put the ball in there, close it all the way until the very corner and then smash it down. I used to never smash it down because I didn't really care. And then I'm like, yeah, it does take longer to cook. Thank you for who pointed that out. <laughs> So then this way, you squeeze it out and the air can escape and then you can close it. This works out really good. These ones, I might do a little bit bigger, just, or not all of them, for a couple because I'm gonna do some hamburgers. For the most part, pound and a half is enough for all of us. Okay, something else I discovered if you have the big bag, just go ahead and plop it in as much as you, sorry, do my, do learn from my mistakes, plop it in, squeeze it where you want, and then just cut it, and then just, you can take that plastic and lift it up in the air, like it will make it come off, so that's good. So I've got hammered here. I'm gonna go stick this out in my freezer. If you want to make it perfect in your freezer, I don't. Maybe in time I'll worry about it being perfectly stacked. I just don't. You could form this into a nice, like, plastic container, make it look aesthetic, but I'm not. For the most part, it's flat. So I'm gonna go put this in my freezer and we'll start on something else. One of those packages of hamburger I put in the refrigerator and I'm gonna save it for this week where I'm doing smash burger. So I just went and got my mold and mildew cleaner. I thought this would be good to clean up the counter because it's 
cut some kind of bleachy something there. So I cleaned it up, wiped up. The next thing I'm gonna make is some breakfast sausage. Never made this before, so this is all new to me. We um, just would never buy it because it was expensive. And then when we found the discount store, I would buy it because it's like cheap. And then um, I would get it like all the time there for inexpensive. So it was like a no brainer just to buy it. Well, then we moved here and you know, it's, it's nowhere. And so we bought those patties at um, Walmart and Aldi has the breakfast patties, but they're like $10 a bag. So they go real, real quick. So I thought, surely you can make this homemade. Yes, you can. So I was looking up recipes and then um, what I found, I was on the Spend with Pennies website. And so I'm gonna try to use that one as best I can. But it said in the description, it was like, you can use ground turkey or hamburger. So in my head, I was thinking sausage with ground turkey. Well, in the recipe, there's nothing to says ground turkey. So I'm thinking to mix it together, probably equal parts. And then all the ingredients, they add fennel seeds. I don't have fennel seeds. So is fennel just the flavor in the sausage? Probably. <laughs> so no fennel. I do have sage, I have garlic, I have poultry seasoning, which I'm gonna use my chicken blend. That's what we're gonna use for our poultry season. I know it's not the same, it's close enough. Thyme leaves, and I don't have rosemary for, again, whatever reason, I don't have that. Paprika and pepper, and salt and pepper. Mix it up, and then I'm gonna let it sit, and then um, I'm gonna put it in Ziploc bags, the big ones, and then I'll smash it down real low. I think what I found, I saw a video online where they, they take it and smush it real flat, and then cut it with a cookie cutter, and then you get nice, round, perfect patties. So I'm gonna try, we're gonna try it. We're gonna say because it was $10 for a tiny bag, and I feel like, what did we spend? This was more expensive this time. Remember this price? I don't remember what it was, but between this and the turkey, I know it's gotta be cheaper, and we gotta be able to make a ton of these, so wish me luck on this. Now let me say, we don't necessarily like just the sausage, so I could just use sausage. My kids more like the fake patties. Like if I got a real sausage patty, they'd be like, ew, they really like, processed ones like McDonald's would have or the ones that we get from Walmart. So I feel like the mixture of the two meats would solve that dilemma. So we're gonna see if I can just mix it together by hand. I hope so. I think just a really good mix and it should work. This is gonna be one of those dishes that I don't know how it's gonna turn out until I actually cook it. So it's set to let it sit, I think, overnight. So what I'm gonna do, I'm not even doing it now, I'm doing it this week, I think. Let me look. I think, uh, yeah, I think I was gonna put one in the refrigerator. So, yes, I believe one day this week I'm gonna be making this. So I'm going to freeze the other three, and then this I'll put in the refrigerator, and I think that what I saw, like you cover it either with plastic or something and roll it out really thin. Then when you have it super thin, you can cut them out. The cook We're gonna try it. All you can do is try it. It smells good. Again, can't taste it because it's raw meat. So I'm gonna put these in the freezer, this in the fridge, and we'll get onto those chickens. Now we're on to the chicken. So I have five packages of chicken. Two I'm gonna make up just alone for chicken fajita meat. That was delicious. We loved having it in the freezer. It's great to have on hand. So I'm gonna do that one in a minute because that'll be just flattening out and do it. And the other one is gonna be, we're gonna be frying chicken, making our own chicken tenders. Yes, we are. I'm gonna fry. Miss Deb, where are you? From Deb's Delicious Dishes. <laughs> she fries her chicken so good and I'm like, I don't like the whole frying thing because I feel like it gets oil everywhere, but I got a solution. So that's gonna be, hopefully this week, we'll see how life goes. But I'm gonna do something else with the chicken here. And the other one I'm gonna do is ground chicken. We had a lot that I ground up. We made like meatballs. The chicken meatballs are really good. I have to be, I, I like the Florentine. The kids did love the Florentine. The first batch we made, I can't remember what kind it was, but I'll have to look back at my video. It was really good. So I'm just gonna grind it up, put it in. I watched this on. Um, Kimberly Watts channel, she did this a long time ago, grind it up. It's like grinding your food processor, it'll just be one nasty time, and then put it in bags, easy. Okay, so that left me with like two, 
three. There was one that was a little bit bigger than the other two. What I'll do with that is make chicken meatballs or what I can also do if I'm out of cream of chicken soup, which I'm not, I can also take some of that and cook that to add it to it too. So whatever, I can also, I flattened enough so I can break it and just take about half. I just don't know what I'll do everything in there, but at least it's in there. The next thing, I've got two packages of chicken here. This one I'm gonna just cut up into like long chunks, I think. This is gonna be for, we're gonna be doing deep fried chicken. So instead of buying boneless chicken, like the deep fried from the store, like I guess I know fried food is not good, but if you're buying the freezer prepared food already, why not make it yourself and make it healthier, right? Yes. <laughs> That's what this is gonna be for. So I'm gonna take my chicken breast, and then the other one, I'm thinking I was gonna, I don't wanna flatten it. I wanna flatten it for the fajitas, but I don't think I wanna flatten it for the chicken strips. I feel like you wanna leave that whole. So Miss Deb, if you are watching, give me some tips. I know this will be already done, and then like I'll have a whole month of this chicken, but at least next time I'll know. I'm not gonna know until I make this what it's like, but I guess I could always take it out and smash it if I need to. So I'm just gonna take it, cut off the yucky, because nobody likes biting into the vein or anything gross, and then, um, we will put it, I'll just put it in the big bowl for now and then we'll separate it into bags. Easy. And sometimes I do the scraps and I do keep them and boil with a little bit of water for Maxine. I don't always do that. And the only reason I don't always do that, yes, I could take it and put it in the freezer, give it to her at a later date. But sometimes like if I find that she maybe has gotten enough, like too much human food, I know but dog food's probably not as good as human food, right? But like her tummy's only so big, so it's like she doesn't need a diet. Now Ruby, she would eat this down in a second because she's a big dog, but Maxine, she's tiny. So I will cut some off, put it in a pan, boil it, and she can have like the fatty part, I guess. But for the most part, I, if it depends on the time or the day, but you know, whether I do it or not. Okay, gross, that is not my favorite thing to do. As I'm cutting this apart, I'm like, there's probably like a whole science to cutting the breast and getting the right stuff off. Chicken is just like, ooh, like after you get, like most of it looks good and some of it's like real stringy, you're like, yuck. I thought about this as I'm cutting it up here. I'm like, I should have saved these scraps to make the ground up chicken, right? Because if I'm gonna grind it up anyways, it doesn't matter if the fat and all of it is in there. So I probably will do that with the remainder. This is gonna be put away for, um, like deep fried tenders and stuff. So I'm gonna divide it into bags, some for tonight, because we're gonna bake some. And the next batch I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pound it for the heat of meat. So this, I probably will, I'll keep this out for a minute because I'll keep adding to it and then I'll just grind it up to do, um, right? Because that's what, it, all it is, chicken meatballs. Yes, that's all it is, because then you can have the fatty in there. I know, gross, it's just gross. Okay, yuck, I do not like doing chicken. Probably the worst food prep that I do not like doing is chicken. Gross, gross, gross. But I'm thinking the, okay, so last time I cut a lot of the fatty stuff off for the fajita meat, but I'm learning, I'm learning this all new. So I feel like I don't have to cut so much fat off because it's gonna cook on the smoker and it'll kind of like cook up the fat. Does that make sense? As long as there's not like the little piece in there, the little tendon grossness, I just cut that chunk off and put it in with the other stuff. So I'm gonna put that in the freezer. I ground it up, I labeled it fattier one. <laughs> So when I go to make it and use it, I'll probably use a smaller one and see, like mixing it up and trying it, does it taste fattier or do you not even notice? If it's noticeable, then I could probably mix it with hamburger or get some ground turkey and mix it in there and then it won't be a big deal. Next time, when I'm doing this next month or the next month, whatever long it lasts, I will remember to not worry about that and use those ends when I'm making my ground chicken. Just live and learn, that's a good thing. So all of this fajita meat, I didn't pound it down super, super flat like crazy, but for the most part, I did. I am gonna put the other stuff in the freezer right now and then I'll be right back and then I will mix up all the ingredients for the pita meat and then let that get in a good marinade. 
I'm gonna make a big batch of marinade for the fajita meat. I'm gonna do le um, lime, juice, olive oil, and then garlic salt, cumin, oregano, and chili, and salt. I just like did lots and lots of spice in here. So the ones I used were um, lime juice and oil, garlic salt, cumin, oregano, chili salt, and then I put hot pepper flakes in there. Look at that. Oh yeah, that's some good. And it mix it before obviously and then taste it. Mm. It's good. Oh yeah, that's really good. Mouse on fire. So I'm gonna divide it up into bags. It's not so much to um, separate from meals. I'm gonna cook it all on the smoker out there. So I'm just gonna put as many as I can in a bag and then um, pour the marinade in there and then we're gonna marinate them overnight. Tomorrow I will smoke them. It is so good. This is probably our favorite thing. Instead of buying that expensive fajita meat, because I buy it, it's great. It's easy to have on hand. It's expensive and you only get so much and then if you make it yourself, so good. The key is your marinade flavor. Add more, add more, add more. I used all this. This was, ten, is it 10 pounds of chicken? 10 pounds, like a whole package. All the way down to here. So a lot of marinating hands to add it, taste it, it's real good, then you're good to go. This right here, I was adding up all the meat and I have close to over 90 pounds of meat that I got. So I was just doing all my meat and calculating how much there was. I did over 90 pounds of meat today prepping it. Now this will save you not just hundreds, it will save you thousands of dollars. And I know it will because you're making it yourself. Like all this chicken right here, I got $20. I think it was like $20 maybe for one of those packages. Let me pour half this in here. $20 for that. Now I know one of those packages is like $10 for one tiny one. And that's not even near the amount of chicken you're gonna get from this recipe. So this, and then same thing with the breakfast sausage. Oh, there was a whole lot of stuff that didn't dissolve on the bottom. Make sure you pour that in there. So I know it's gonna save you a lot of money. It takes time. Prepping, meal prepping takes time. Like today, I'm taking my whole afternoon here. It's gonna be a couple hours. I'm doing this. And you know what though? And I didn't even really do, I didn't even make freezer meals. It was just prepping my meat. So you don't have to necessarily make a ton of meals, but just by doing this, this is gonna give us a ton of grilled chicken, which is awesome. We have all those ground chicken, the ground up chicken, so we can make any kind of recipe we want. The hamburger is all separated instead of buying it more expensive individually. The chicken drummets, same thing, all separately. We just grab them when we need them. What else are we making? The breakfast sausage, I'm excited for that. And then, uh, and then we'll have dinner tonight too. So was that it? I think that's everything we did, didn't we? Yes, so great thing. So this is just gonna marinate. I'm gonna put this out in my, I might put it in here, I'll see how much room I have. Refrigerator, and then just let it marinate. This this is probably my absolute favorite. So we'll, if we save thousands, it'll help you save thousands this year. It definitely can help you save thousands this year. I know it will because doing this yourself, whole lot of saver on everything. It's just the time. You know, if, it, if you value time, then do it. If you don't have time, then buy the processed food. It's a win-win. It's like some people, I know people say, well, you're buying so much processed food for your family. Well, sometimes it's, I value the time that I'm doing other things. And I didn't really care to make all the food from scratch because I was so busy doing other things. So now it's like, okay, I got a little bit more time right now. I'll spend more time in the kitchen. I'm comfortable here. We're doing better. I'm getting out, finding things to do, that kind of stuff where I don't feel like I've got to do so many other things right now. So all about what you can do, where you want to place the time that you're doing things. So the meat prep is done. I'm like, ah, definitely glad to be done with that. So all of that part is finished. I'm looking at my list. The other thing I'm gonna do is chop up my onions and peppers and puree them. I'll see how far I get. I filled my dishwasher because doing the um, food processor, those kind of things, stick it in a dishwasher and let it wash it. It'll start washing, it might take it out as I'm um, doing things here. But what I'm gonna do is get started on dinner tonight. So what I'm gonna do here, I haven't, my mom used to use this. What do you do, just shake it? One or two pieces at a time. Can you put it all in the bag? Can you basically shake it and put it like shake and bake, right? Remember that? Yes, you can make your own. Did I? I just bought it because I did. That's good, whatever you gotta do. Again, no judgment from anybody. You do, no one knows your life. People will say, can say all day long how you should be doing things and how it's beneficial for your family. But you know what? 
you do what you can do in your own life. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to do a sheep hand dinner. I have a few potatoes left. I've got sweet potatoes. I've got some fresh green beans, and I'm thinking, um, and this chicken. So I'm going to go with the chicken. I'm going to get the drumsticks in. Turn the oven on. Drumsticks, it says 45 minutes. Is that true? Shake it. Just okay. Yeah, so I'm going to cook the drumsticks right away because those are going to need to go in. And then I think I can add the little breast pieces on the pan with the potatoes because that's only 25 minutes. Is that true? Almost 20 minutes. So that's what I'll do. Do not cover or turn chicken or pork while baking. So we're going to just sit here, shake away, put it on here. Something different. So the chicken, I was gonna put it all in one pan and realized that I have a ton of stuff. So what I'm gonna do is put the drumsticks in, so about probably about another five minutes, I'll put the other chicken in so it can kind of be done at the same time. And I have this whole pan of veggies. This tastes so good. Taste your flavors. I added, um, was it cayenne pepper? The orange one? Cayenne pepper to give a little kick with garlic salt and Parmesan cheese and the potatoes. That'll be so good. And then just a little bit of pepper, a little bit of garlic salt, and the same thing for the green beans. It's so, so good. Anybody else love raw green beans? I do. Anybody grow up picking those all the time and tasting them? They're so good. And then um, and that's just using up those things that are gonna not, no one's gonna eat. So now that, you know. And then the breadcrumbs for the chicken, I think, is it panko? I don't have bought shaken bacon, whatever, since I was a kid. <laughs> so I don't think I ever bought it when I first married. My mom used to always make it with flour. But looking at it, I'm like, I don't think it's breadcrumbs. It looks like panko. So if we love it, I can make it with panko. The next thing to do is the sweet potatoes. I'm gonna smash it down. I've got a little bit of leftover syrup from um, crepes that we made, and I've got some butter I'm gonna put in there. I'll put that in the oven as well and heat it up, and this will be a really good, delicious dinner. You want really good sweet potatoes, bake them in the oven like that. They just basically you rip the outside off, and they just taste so good. Next scene smells sweet potatoes. Look at her. She's like, I know there's sweet potatoes. You like sweet potatoes. And maybe later she's got some dried ones from Miss Barbara. So I'm gonna put this in this bowl and then I think I'm just gonna put the butter on top and then pour the syrup there and just let it heat up that way. And then we'll stir it before we serve it. Delicious, this is so good, mm, the yummy. It's like sweet potato casserole, but so, so good. So I just have to wait. The oven, we'll put it in, yummy. I was gonna sit here and I was gonna get all my veggies pureed up and prepped, but I think, you know what, I'm gonna wait for that to tomorrow. That's a beautiful thing. It's like it's already getting, it's four, so I have an hour, we're eating about an hour and a half. So that'll be enough time to let that cook, but I still have to edit today's video. I gotta make a couple phone calls. So I figured why don't I get that stuff done. I will wait and show you what it looks like, because I know it's gonna be delicious. I know it's gonna be a delicious dinner. So I'll come back in a little bit, show you the delicious dinner, and then um, we're, I'm done in the kitchen for today. Dishwasher's rolling. Tomorrow I'll be ready to do some more meal prep. It's been a great day, saving money. Took me a few extra hours, got to put all the groceries away, a few extra hours doing the meal prep, but you know what, I saved tons of money. Now if you can, awesome. If you can't, don't worry about it. I didn't look back a month ago. I didn't at all. <laughs> I was spending the money, who cares? This month saved a little bit, so you do whatever you can do in your time of life. So it is now the nighttime hour, and I was just upstairs editing this very long video and realized that I did not film dinner at all. <laughs> I was like, there's not even any leftovers to film anything, but it was very, very good. 
chicken was a winner like it's gone it's gone there's no the kids are like can we have some more I'm like there is no more chicken so winner of the chicken potatoes a little spicy I added that cayenne pepper so they're definitely a little bit more spicy green beans were good and then I pulled out some kale salad we had kale salad and then we put up bananas and sprinkles was that it I think that was it for dinner so delicious dinner I feel bad I'm sorry it worked it turned out good everybody ate it so call it a winner I hope that you enjoyed today's video lots of meal prep Let's put groceries away. Just know that you can do it and save yourself some money if you can. And if not, that's okay too. So have a fantastic rest of your day. Come back tomorrow. We got more food to make. I got more food to prep, more food to cook from scratch. I'm excited. So I'll see you tomorrow. Bye.